And finally, UN report says that nearly 9,100 people, including civilians, have perished since the start of the crisis in Ukraine last year. The UN Human Rights Office has recorded the deaths of 47 civilians in the conflict zones of eastern Ukraine between August 16 and November 15. It says that half the recent casualties were due to explosives and called for extensive mine clearance ahead of the winter snow. The UN report also described the situation as highly flammable, despite the withdrawal of heavy weaponry from the contact line. The fighting between the Army and pro-Russians has largely subdued since a new ceasefire went into effect last August, but both sides continue to report daily violations of the truce. Joachim Flores, Center for Syncretic Studies, joins us from Belgrade. Joachim Flores, uh, things were go are going okay. You know, the ceasefire, for the most part, is being held. And then what happens? You have the Vice President of America, Joe Biden, visiting Ukraine and putting the flame again into motion. Yeah, you know, it's uh, probably not a coincidence. And, um, and I think that one of the things, of course, that people look at naturally is the fact that... Uh, he has appointed his own son, Hunter Biden, uh, to sit on the council of one of the major energy firms in the country and has established, of course, uh, staked out rights to shale and uh, other energy resources that, um, that uh, based upon the, the conditions of the last ceasefire, uh, they had to pull back and actually canceled the operation. And I think that this was very bad financially directly for Biden, but of course there are larger uh, American interests uh, at work here, too. Like what? You know, first and foremost, the United States never wanted this ceasefire. Uh, their intention, of course, is to create a, a permanent zone of instability around uh, countries like Iran and Russia and also China. So the United States is becoming more robust, of course, in, in all of their ventures. And one of the things that they're most concerned about, speaking about the United States, has been the increasing success of the work, the common work between Russia and Iran and Syria in, com in combating terrorism in Syria and possibly also uh, in the near future uh, more proactively in Iraq. So the United States really sees that its position is slipping. They're not happy with this and they hope that if they can create multiple fronts at the same time that it will overwhelm or expand the capacity for Russia to involve as vigorously in the Syrian campaign. So they're really trying to get them then back tied down in Ukraine if possible. And this also helps, of course, their script for the Europeans that, that, that Russia is a threat, which most Europeans uh, don't want to see it that way.